Hi, uh, so I've wanted to wait this video for a while now and it's to do with uh, using AI and Camera Lucida to create uh, basically images that you can you can paint or draw and Camera Lucida is a great app for um, basically being able to help you to draw and to paint but in terms of um, getting everything into proportion correctly so for those budding artists that want to create art uh, but want a little bit of assistance so the camera lucida app is uh, really good at being able to help you in that respect so the next thing uh, as an evolution of that i've always liked uh, various artists and i like the whole notion of urban art and sketching in a very very loose style um, sort of pen and ink with a with a color wash uh, so that um, you get that nice effect of bright colors and a sort of sketchy type image anyway i thought that basically artificial intelligence um, something like mid journey should be able to help with that i've always liked looking at ian Fanelli, if that's how you pronounce his name, sorry if I've screwed that up. Um, his, his art, and I think it's really, really good. Uh, I like the looseness of it, um, but equally he has a knack for being able to paint and draw in a very sketchy way, but with uh, splashes of colour. And those, those splashes of colour just transform what is a pen and ink drawing into something rather special. It's his own style and he's very, very successful at it and does loads and loads of really good paintings and does training tutorials, um, you know, courses, etc, etc. No, I like that. I like that style. I think it's a great style. And, uh, it's the sort of style that I would aspire to at some point, uh, but uh, I doubt I'll ever naturally get there. So I started to look at Camera Lucido and how that may help to move in that direction. And I also thought that, you know, AI, namely at the time, mid journey AI would help in that, in that journey to get from basically having an idea in your head about some sort of image that you wanted to paint or draw um, into having something that you could use in Camera Lucida to give you inspiration and help you create that that painting for yourself or, or, or potentially even commercially if, if that's kind of where you want to go. It's not my thing, but you know, that's one area. So um, Ian Finelli is one of those artists, one of many that is um, of, of a sort of um, a niche that I, I guess are called urban artists. I, I don't know if he'd like to be called that, but that, for the sake of this video, that's that's what I'm calling him and that genre of, of painting. Uh, so then I went down that rabbit hole of exploring um, uh, urban artists and trying to find out those urban artists that I'd like to um, not copy as such, because uh, you don't really want to copy someone's painting, um, but you want to kind of adopt perhaps some of their characteristics or styles and uh, that you can do obviously with the aid of uh, Google searches you can just look at their artwork and see the sort of urban sketching that they do. Now the nice thing is that uh, AI came around you know many years ago but more succinctly in the last year or two and Mid Journey uh, was one of the first sort of major AI engines to start producing some really quite interesting art. So my concept really is to combine mid-journey urban artists and some ideas about what sort of painting I'd, I'd like to produce, mash those together and then create something that I could use in Camera Lucida to uh, help me to move down the sort of urban artist road. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Mid Journey. What is Mid Journey? Uh, Mid Journey, for those that uh, have been living in a hole somewhere, um, is uh, an artificial intelligence engine that is what they call prompt driven which means that you type in some text about the image that you're trying to create and it then produces effectively four images based on that prompt. And then you can choose 
one, two, three or four of those images and upscale them to a much bigger size and download them and do what you like with them. In theory, they are completely unique in as far as they're copyright free and you wouldn't have to worry about uh, any sort of copyright strike. So that's, that's kind of an ideal situation because you don't really want to be copying some art and then if potentially you're ever going to try and sell that you don't really want to be in a situation where you're going to get sued for a copyright strike and mid journey is pretty good at that i mean it had its faults to start with but as time has gone on um you know it's it's got really good you know here's a, a very short prompt for example old grumpy man you know and it creates for old grumpy men um, so, you know, that's quite interesting. But Mid Journey is a much bigger animal than that. You know, you can elaborate on the prompts to the nth degree to make them something into something that is more in line with perhaps potentially what you want to paint. So you can give it styles like pen and ink or urban or, or, or um, you know, impressionistic or whatever sort of painting style you want. And within those painting styles, you can also you can also ask it to paint in a style of a person and it, you know it, it's clever enough to go off and find that person's style and bring back uh, paintings that are in the style of that person but using your prompt so you may want a style of person xyz but you want it to be a picture of a house or a, a, a landscape or you know a, a, anything you like really in that way, you are sort of copying the, the artist, um, but in a way you're not. You're, you're basically adopting some of their style characteristics, um, but obviously you're going to paint that painting and use whatever Mid Journey may throw back at you as being something that you may want to use as a, as a basis for a painting. And that's where you might incorporate it, say, with Camera Lucida to basically help you to create that painting. So I'm sure I'm not the only one that's done this and I'm sure there's plenty of commercial people out there that are, are doing it and probably making some money at it or just having fun um, doing paintings. Uh, I've done a few um, using the sort of techniques that I'm talking about now. So what I'd like to do with this video is to basically go through some ideas that you, that you may want to adopt for your own benefit or your own styles. Uh, that may help you on that journey. And the first thing to do is obviously establish what artists you like, you know, and that's that's quite simple. You know, if you like impressionistic style, you might type into Google search, um, show me the images that, you know, are impressionistic, modern impressionistic, blah, blah, blah. And you get some idea, then you can see who painted those. And um, then you can, you know, make a note of those artists and so I'll say, well, you know, that artist is, you know, those group of five artists are the style of which I, I like. Uh, and therefore, I will now pop into Mid Journey and I'll ask it to do a painting of XYZ, uh, but in the style of, and then, you know, you might name one or two artists that you like the style of. And you'll start to generate loads of, loads of pictures. Um, as you can see in the background, I'll go through some of these in a minute. So these, these are really what I've called urban sketches inspiration. Uh, so they're not, they're not necessarily to be directly copied and they're not the original artist's work. They are similar um, paintings that potentially perhaps that artist may uh, have that style of, of painting. It doesn't always match up with their style of painting at all, uh, but it does produce some interesting paintings. And if you, if you like the painting or the, the images that are being thrown back at you through the AI engine that is Mid Journey and, and others, uh, you might want to download those pictures, load them into Camera Lucida and then, and then obviously paint them. So what I thought I'd do is to basically have a look at some of these, these pictures and have a look at the prompts behind those pictures so you can see or get some idea of what it is that I did, you know, amongst millions of other people, no doubt, to produce those sort of images. Uh, in my particular case, I was looking at urban sketching. I like the uh, the splashy colour, the loose line work, the pen and ink work, and just that effect. Uh, you know, in three months' time, I might like a completely different uh, genre or style of painting, and I'll, I'll probably do the same thing again. 
So I thought what we'd do is we'd have a look at some of these if uh, if you want to hang around on the on the video, and we'd uh, start to have a look at uh, the prompts that I use to produce them. Not so that you can copy those prompts, kind of if you want to, but there's you know the infinite number of prompts you could type in. It's just your imagination that uh, will hold you back. Uh, but you know, to basically give you some ideas or some of the ideas that I used um, when I created some of my paintings um, via Camera Lucida. And uh, you can see some of those paintings on the Facebook group uh, for Camera Lucida. And uh, you can see perhaps how I may have got to doing that painting. Now, some of these paintings, you may think, oh, why bother painting it? You know, it's, it's as good as it needs to be, you know, print it out, frame it, job done. Uh, that's not kind of where I'm coming from, personally. I'm looking for them at, uh, at an inspirational level to use the same style of the painting. It's not necessarily of a certain place, it's just a made up place by Mid Journey that may look like somewhere that you know somebody may recognise, but generally speaking it, it's not. And uh, it, it may just be that you use parts of it in your painting or all of it, or you adopt some of the colours or you change the colours or you you, know, you do exactly what you want to do with it, but um, it's really up to you to decide how you how you use Mid Journey and the other numerous AI engines that are out there uh, to do this sort of work. Now, Mid Journey that I've talked about is uh, there's a free tier, and you can do pretty much everything that I show you here on the free tier, and then there's a quite a cheap uh, paid for uh, tier, which gives you a few more facilities, but certainly the free the free tier gives you 95% of what you would probably want, especially with, with Camera Lucida. So let's have a look at some of these and go through them. I'm going to uh, shrink myself down into this little corner so you can see a bit more. And uh, we'll just take this first image as an example. So what I've done in um, Google Photos is I've basically made an album and put these pictures in there, but I've, for the info, I've actually copied the prompt that I used in Mid Journey to produce the image, or a group of four images, and this is one of those images. So what we have here is, this is the prompt, simplified, because I want it very simple, simplistic. Uh, you'll find with AI engines, it's good to repeat some key words so that it gets a really strong impression about what you're looking for. Uh, city scene, sketch, with a maximum of three colors, Probably more than three there. Sketch, uh, colourful, houses on the street, hand-drawn, watercolour illustration. Now here we go, this is where I add in the style of Bernhard Vogel. I apologise if I've mucked his name up uh, as well, but uh, Bernhard was one of those artists that I, that I like. Uh, look at uh, and I've put detailed crowd scenes I always like a painting with people in it I think it adds some something to the painting some movement to it and and uh, make just makes the painting look nicer detailed crowd scene crowd scenes nice shadows uh, to give depth to the sketch that's pretty much the prompt now this other garbage stuff at the end is just to help mid journey give an idea about the sizing of the picture the, one of the important ones is AR, the aspect ratio. So that's two hyphens, AR, and then a space. And I want this to be nine by 16 because quite often when I use Camera Lucida, I'm painting in a portrait mode. And nine by 16 is a nice portrait mode. And then I'm just telling it which version of Mid Journey I want to use, version 5.2, which was the current version at the time of doing this, which was back in July. So you can see from this is one of the pictures that it produced. Um, and it's, it's a nice, nice uh, picture. I, I, I like it. Uh, Bernhard Vogel was the was the artist. Uh, you can always pop along to um, Google, type in the artist's name, look for images of, of that art, you know, of, who's that? <laughs> look for images painted by that artist and get some idea of that artist's work. Um, so you would type in, you know, whatever, and you can see the sort of work that Bernhardt does, and uh, it's it's nice. I, I it's I like the style personally. I think it's very artistic, and this is the style that it's come back in. I wouldn't say it's ideally his style, but it, it goes down that path. So that's uh, that's one of them. That's that's uh, that's a typical example of a a prompt. 
and uh, you can see another one here which was pretty much exactly the same prompt so quite often what will happen with midjourney is it will return four pictures when you give it one prompt and then you can choose one or all of them to uh, upscale to a larger picture uh, which I did uh, hence the reason why we have individual pictures and then you can choose to download them if you want to so that's an example there of of uh, using an artist as inspiration and if we scroll down we perhaps go to an example like this one which is subtly different uh, even though it's by the same artist um, and again it's just producing different results sketch houses on the street hand drawn watercolor illustration and style of uh, detailed crowd scenes night shadows so again you know it does look subtly different i happen to like uh, the result that it brought back there and here's here's another one so hopefully uh, as we go through this video you'll get a much better idea about what i'm trying to achieve here and those two pictures were taken from this prompt these are the four pictures that Midjourney returned to me. Totally uh, unique and you know, drawable, really, using something like Camera Lucida. And if I go to uh, perhaps this one here, what have we got? So watercolour painting of the main square in Prague in the style of UHD image. Lively street scenes, drips and splatters. I quite like the splatter effect on, on paintings when you, when you finish and that sort of ad hoc uh, painting technique. Light, turquoise and red, new Leipzig school. So you can put in, you know, different art schools, you can put in different techniques, you can put in different effects. Obviously, I, I particularly like the watercolor effect, so I'm tending to go for watercolor pictures. And uh, here's another one. A lot of these are pretty similar, and you know, you'll find you get a lot of images back that you can that you can paint. City scene sketch, different, slightly different prompt, watercolour wash with two colours, um, sketch colourful houses on the street, hand draw watercolour illustration in the style of Bernard Vogel and detailed crown scenes, aspect ratio number 16, because I'm painting in portrait. And again, I, I think it's just great. I love that style. I think it's really nice. And as we go down, you can see there's various paintings. This one here is um, quite an abstracty sort of painting. And this is a watercolour wash with two colours. People walking on a street, watercolour painting, layered, fluid ink washes, crowd, Nina Johansson and Gabby Campanario. So again, if you look up Nina Johansson or Johansson, uh, you'll see her style and, and Gabby's as well. So another two urban artists that I happen to like the style of. And I like I love this. This is sort of very impressionistic, minimalistic. Um, it's got lots of people, crowd scene, as it says in the prompt. So that's that's the great picture. Uh, these were the four pictures that it returned, obviously upscaled this one and probably one or two of the others as well. And you can carry on doing this in lots of different people's styles. Again, I'm still using Nina and Gabby's styles here and another watercolour scene. Here is a much bigger uh, picture. And instead of nine by 16, I put the aspect ratio to 16 by nine. So very much landscape now. Um, and this is looking at people walking on a street, watercolour painting in the style of layered colours, detailed environments, fluid ink washes, etc, etc. A lot of these styles are, are some of the stumbling blocks for people because they kind of say, well, you know, that's all very well, but how do I know what to type in here? Well, AI engine prompting, as they call it, has been around for quite a while now, and you can easily just Google prompts for urban sketching watercolours or something like that, or watercolour prompts using Midjourney or abstract pen and ink wash um, images using Midjourney AI. Anything like that into Google and you'll find there's a big rabbit hole that you disappear down with. The whole thing about prompt and prompting the AI engines. So prompting is just again typing in something into the AI engine. So you go into Midjourney and you would just type in the prompt and you would get the four pictures back. Now, um, so if, if anybody wants me to do a video 
with more detail on how to set up Midjourney and a bit more detail on, on getting hold of these prompts, I, I can do that. There are a million videos out there already explaining to people how to do that. So it's not rocket science at all. And um, once you've set it up, you can just dip in whenever you want to and produce artworks that you want to use. So we have a look at this one, for example, um, this is back to Bernhard and simplistic city scene sketch with maximum three colors, colorful houses on a street, hand drawn, detailed crowd scenes. Uh, I, like, I like the way in which a lot of these paintings are effectively quite crude, uh, but they have a, a wonderful effect in my mind. So every painter, artist, creator has a different view on how they want to paint. Some want to paint really photorealistically, some want to be very abstract, some want to use various styles. I particularly quite like urban sketching, I like pen and ink and I like loose uh, colour washes, so that's why I'm doing this. And then we, we come down to perhaps something like this sort of abstract um, sneaker here. So you can see you can you can get it to paint really anything you want. You know, you don't have to go with landscapes and buildings and things like that. Here's a, here's a row of house, Nina and Gabby again, uh, those two urban artists. Um, so fairly straightforward. And now we're on to another favorite subject of mine, which is motorcycles. This is not any motorcycle that I know, but it is obviously a picture, a painting of a motorcycle. Things aren't quite right. Um, this little light on the front mud guard, I don't know where that sprung up from. It's unusual to have that. There's the start of perhaps some sort of kickstart here for the bike. The engine looks sort of fairly generic. It's a generic old motorcycle and that, that, that was probably the prompt that I put in. And you can see there are various other ones here as well. Uh, so just experimenting with the prompt to get different motorcycles. I think in this this example here, I uh, I put it in, in the style of a Kawasaki modern race bike, something like that. Uh, and you can see you've got an artistic impression of a Kawasaki green motorcycle. And the same goes for these sort of pictures. They're all uh, inspiration, uh, inspirational pictures that uh, I just think are are great because you can then choose these are vw beetles which i i like and um, they're different prompts or well, this was one prompt to produce four pictures and they're all colorful vw beetles and, you know down here we've got sort of more of a abstracty sort of landscape with big bold pen and ink very loose um you know watercolors we've got sort of uh, an urban style sketch of a colorful landscape pen and ink so that's uh, pretty straightforward and then we've got styles here which are very sort of minimalistic but I like the minimalistic painting style and the pen and ink and you can see from here you get a very good impression about what the painting's about um, most of my paintings with Camera Lucida would probably take about an hour to do I'm not uh, into photo realistic painting uh, my personal opinion is I, I don't go down that path I like the very loose style, uh, so more this sort of style. Here's the prompt city scene, um, sketch colourful houses on the street, and this is um, basically in the style of Emma Fitzpatrick. And again, if you were to Google Emma Fitzpatrick, you would see her style. And, uh, although it's not, you know, you, you would find that that's not exactly her painting. You would, you would get the, um, you know, you would be telling mid-journey that you wanted in that sort of style. So I love these sort of paintings of hers and I think you know some of them are just absolutely great, very minimalistic, um, lots of splashes of colour. Uh, so Emma does some really good, really really good work. So I liked her style so I basically asked it to do some paintings in that style and here we are back to uh, some motorbike images. Again they don't actually look exactly like a motorbike. I mean this one here for example uh, I asked it to do uh, an E-type, E-type Jaguar uh, in a loose colour wash style etc etc and these are the sort of images that uh, I got back. These were four images from a very loose prompt about an E-type. And uh, from that, I, I sort of liked one or two of them, which I upscaled and, and used for paintings. As we go down, we've got old cars. Um, so really, uh, I suppose the, the crux of it with this, with this video is 
for me to talk to you about um, using AI, artificial intelligence, to your benefit. Now, the thing is with, with Camera Lucida, you get in the best of both worlds. So you've got AI, artificial intelligence on the one hand, which is basically helping you with your imagination because you're typing the prompt. That's your prompt that you've typed in. It's bringing you back some results. You're then deciding which of those results you want to keep. You're then sort of keeping a store of those as inspirational ideas. You're then effectively taking those paintings from AI, uh, opening them up in Camera Lucida and then using them for inspiration within Camera Lucida to do your paintings. Uh, and and it's, it's very, very flexible, very, very easy. Uh, and a very quick way of, um, you know, sort of creating paintings that are fundamentally covering the subjects that you enjoy painting, rather than sitting there scratching your head and then thinking, oh, what am I going to paint? Um, not finding inspiration. And this is all before you've even got to the, um, the usage of the Camera Lucida app to actually do the painting. So half of the battle is finding inspiration about what you want to paint, you know, finding an image in your head or a photograph or, or you know, some sort of image that you actually want to paint, then loading it into Camera Lucida, then actually doing your painting. Now, if you're into photo realistic, then obviously uh, that's form of painting or drawing. You can easily just obviously just load a paint, uh, you know, a photograph and start drawing that in Camera Lucida, job done. If you are more uh, perhaps like myself, who like uh, abstracty, loose line color and washes, for example, as a style, you, you would do what I did, which was to basically research those artists that I that I followed for a long time and like looking at their work, and sort of say, well, that's the sort of style I I, I like, you know. So these days you've got so many tools available to help you move into that area. All you now have to do is use an AI engine like Midjourney, and I'll try and put all the links and stuff in the description to this stuff um, and, and create more videos if this is the sort of video that you like to have a look at or, or help you to understand how to use these uh, these AI engine tools to help you in Camera Lucida to do painting. Um, so anyway, I hope you like this. If you do, then uh, why not like and subscribe? Because uh, I'm always doing loads of things like this. I have a completely eclectic interest in lots of things, including uh, restoring uh, old cameras and uh, mostly film cameras and large format cameras, um, making cameras, uh, letterpress printing, um, lino cuts, uh, any sort of printing technique, large format, uh, cyanotypes, that sort of stuff. All these are all videos that I, I produce and, and will be producing even more of. Um, Camera Lucida is an app that I've, I've used for a long time. I've done several other videos that you might want to have a look at on, on using uh, Camera Lucida. And Peter, the author of Camera Lucida, has done some excellent videos on, on using Camera Lucida and, uh, and the, the techniques that you use within the app to help you paint. I know he's currently, that is of October time, 2023 working on a big release, a new release of Camera Lucida where you can use uh, external cameras now and uh, produce images um, or produce paintings that are much larger than say A3. You know, you can go 16 by 12, 24 inch square. You can go as big as you like really almost. Um, so that's, that's coming up in the pipeline with Camera Lucida. There's also lots of other tools and techniques within the app that you can use. Again, both Peter and myself have done lots of videos on uh, that will help you understand how to use the app and how to use it to your benefit and how to make pen and ink uh, images from photographs that you can paint in that style. Uh, but this one is merely just to sort of give you a background into um, how, how, you know, utilising today's technology to help you uh, find inspiration to do your paintings and to find sources of imagery that you can then load into Camera Lucida or just paint directly from a picture if you want to and uh, create your own masterpieces uh, that are in a style that is your own style but uh, potentially loosely sort of based on other people's styles which is after all what an artist does you know an artist studies other people's artwork and 
they they learn from other people, other artists. Uh, they look at their styles and they say, yeah, I, li I like the way they've done those colour washes. I like that pen and ink style. I like the looseness of this type of painting. And uh, they use those styles in their painting. So, you know, without getting into the bait of whether something is cheating, not cheating, whether copying another artist is 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 sort of semi-ethical or not. Um, I think artists have copied each other since the year dot, uh, since cavemen days. So I don't get hung up on that at all, because as you're painting and you're putting your own ink washes down onto paper and you're doing your own colour mixing and you're painting your own paintings and doing your own colour schemes, that artwork is your own artwork. It is an original and it is your own original. What you do with it is up to you. Anyway, I hope that's that's been of interest. As I say, if you can like and subscribe to the channel, there are lots more like this and lots more coming. Uh, if you if you want me to do some videos, leave some comments below about the sort of videos that you find interesting or want more information on. You know how to use Mid Journey, how to use Mid Journey to create original artwork, how to use Mid Journey to you know or artificial intelligence to create different styles of painting i will i will do that and uh, produce them and throw them out i'll obviously be producing some new videos once peter releases his new release or uh, big release of camera lucida plus the fact uh, i will be doing all my other videos that i do on various other subjects so keep tuned and uh, i will see you on the next video so uh, i'll see you soon cheers bye